Hello and welcome back to another wild roller coaster of a video featuring lots of steaming hot electricians. Today it is 33 degrees and as you saw from my last video probably or the one before, I don't like working in the heat. But today I'm in a nice cool cupboard, you might recognise this, it's day two. I am back at this place where I changed the consumer unit earlier on in the week and today I'm doing some kind of minor remedial works really to sort out a load of little issues that were around the property. I've also got to just label this consumer unit up, um, finalise that, but let me show you around and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing today and then we'll jump on and show you some of the little jobs. As always if you enjoy my videos don't forget to hit a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already and if you hit the notification bell then you will be notified every time I post a new video so you won't miss out. Let's go. So first things first, we have this old smoke alarm, which basically uh, the whole cover was kind of broken off, but it's on, it was on its own circuit. Um, however, now I'm changing it onto the lighting circuit because the lights here don't have a CPC. Well, they do, they have a CPC wire, but it's not connected back to earth anywhere. So I'm gonna make a link of earth wire between these two put a new smoke detector on there and that will mean that the smoke detector and all the light fittings in this extension are earthed. Up here, this light was a complete bodge, so I'm gonna be taking this down, fitting a new Knightsbridge BT14 uh, LED light fitting and sorting out the connections because basically there was a massive uh, kind of tangle of connector blocks and stuff above there, a classic uh, DIY or just kind of person who didn't know what they were doing jobby we've got some of these pendants that we need to sort out can't remember which ones but basically some of them have got kind of um, single exposed um, wire at them yeah like that one for example so Basically, you just got to refit the lamp holder and that should do the trick. But can you see that it's kind of even the insulation on the single cables is kind of damaged. So you need to sort that out because somebody could get an electric shock if they were changing the bulb. And then we've got some loose sockets to sort out. Um, yeah, not this one. I think uh, we've got one in here. Yeah, here we go. So this one, the whole back box is just loose. So I'm just gonna, hopefully it's just a case of putting a new fixing or two in there. And then upstairs we've got a light, uh, a socket which is broken, I think. So that needs replacing. Uh, let's have a look, I think it's in here. Yeah. So it's broken and I think it's the actual back box is kind of the lug has snapped off so I'll probably need to put a new back box on this and just um, probably fit a new, oh no the switch is broken as well, actually I don't know if I've got a single socket, I need to check that, that might be a problem. Uh, what else have we got, everything else is kind of okay in here really. Um, this is just, looks a bit horrible but it's fine. Does the trick, same with all these switches really. They look pretty awful, but they're actually okay. That one's a bit loose, so we'll just tighten that up. And then just check these pendants. Make, yeah, see that one just needs tightening up as well. There's a bit of exposed single uh, wires there. I don't know how they end up doing that really. That one's the same, a little bit of exposed single wiring. That's all fine. Kind of smells like it's been painted in here recently, actually. Um, yeah, that one could do with tightening up as well. Yeah, they're not great, these, really. So, I'm gonna start downstairs and just work my way up because it's so hot upstairs as heat rises that at least it's a bit cooler downstairs and I should be able to kind of get the downstairs stuff done and by that time it will be a bit cooler upstairs hopefully. So
So which one should we do first? I think I'm gonna do the bathroom light first. So I'll set you up here and then uh, put you on the time lapse. So this is a real classic DIY jobby. Well, I don't, you know, it might not be DIY, it might be an electrician, but whoever it was, they didn't do a very good job. Basically, they've just put everything in connector blocks and shoved it up into the ceiling. So I need to sort all this out. What I'm gonna to have to do is put all this into a Wago box and then put it up in the ceiling and then just run one cable into the light because the BT14 lights that I've got, I could do the connections inside those, but it's not ideal. I think it's better to just do a, a Wago box up in the ceiling. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, when I found that there was no earthing to the lights in the uh, this section of the house, I straight away, when I found this, I was like, oh, it's gotta be that, you know? But actually the earths are all connected. So it's not, it's not that amazingly. You would have thought it would be, but it's not. I don't know where the break is. I think it's from somewhere from the feed to the first light, but it's just literally not connected. I mean, I will double check it again now that I've changed the board, just to make sure that it's not something stupid like it wasn't connected properly in the old board, but I'm pretty sure I double checked the connection in the old board before and it was fine. So uh, I'm just gonna get this, make sure this is uh, dead and then start work. So obviously these red ones that are bunched together, these are the CPC, uh, the um, permanent lives. Then we've got the switch live, neutral, and CPC. Now when I measure, from live to CPC now, I do have 230 volts. So I'm gonna just check that, um, do an earth loop test on it. Maybe we've got an earth again, in which case we don't actually need to do that into the connection between the smoke alarm and the light, which would be quite nice. So I'm just gonna disconnect the CPCs here so that I can get my crocodile clip on them. And then for the neutral and the phase the line conductor, I'll just dab on with my with my um, test probes. So crop clip on there. Turn this on to the no trip test. Okay, that's good. We've got. 0 0.8 ohms now for um, ZS. So that's actually fine. So somehow we've got ourselves an earth again. I have no idea how that has happened. So I've not changed any other light fittings or anything. So it must have been in the old board, but somehow it wasn't properly connected. So that's an easy fix. This is the new light that I'm gonna put up. It's from Knight's Bridge, it's called called a BT14 and it's my go-to kind of bathroom light that I use. LED, uh, 14 watts, really, really bright. And it's, it's just, you know, it's IP65 or whatever. Um, is it IP? Yeah, IP65. Um, it just, it's sort of all singing, all dancing, but it's not expensive. So it's absolutely perfect. You could change the color as well from 3000K to 4000K, or even you can do 5700K if you want to. It's sort of got different colored LEDs in it and you can just change the, which LEDs are, are used. Uh, it's got a nice cable entry in the back, really easy to fit. So it sort of, yeah, just does everything that you need for a bathroom light really. And they're only about 20 quid or something. So I like them. So what I'm gonna do now is just cut these making sure that I keep the tape on them so I know what's what. Um, presumably it's got the yellow, so the three core, that will be for the fan. So you've got live and switch line. And then, interesting, there's a blue one, they put black sleeving on it. I forgot about that. 
in the good old days when we had red, black and green yellow. So, that's that old one gone. Right, so, um, gonna have to do a little bit of improvisation here. You're gonna laugh at me now because you know that I sort of had a bit of a rant about these because I didn't really like them. These are the Inshore boxes by Ideal. And I just said that I prefer Wargo boxes basically. Well, I've run out of Wargo boxes. They, they basically have some kind of shortage going on at the moment. But I don't know if it's because of COVID situation or what, but basically the wholesalers, none of the wholesalers had any. So I've ordered some in, but I don't know how long they're gonna to take to come in. So in the meantime, I've got three of these left on the van that I've not used, so I'm just gonna use this. Um, actually, let me know in the comments if you've had any problems getting hold of materials, because it's quite an interesting subject for conversation, that material shortages. I know the plasterers have had terrible time because they couldn't get hold of any plaster, but let me know as an electrician if you've had any material shortages that have affected you at all, I think that'd be really interesting to know in the comments. And maybe we can have a conversation about that. Um, or if you're from another trade as well, you know, let me know in the comments what, what material shortages you have faced because it seems to have been a big problem for some people. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is cut out the ceiling big enough to fit this junction box in. Um, so just, I've got my pad saw, I've put a dust sheet down here so it'll catch the dust. I'm trying to get into the habit of doing that because usually what I do is I just don't bother and then I hoover up afterwards, but it takes a lot longer to do that. So I'm trying to get into the habit of just putting dust sheets down. Do this, got a few ideal connectors left, so I'm gonna use those um, and then fit the new light up and that should be good to go. These are like the Wargo boxes, you need to fit a cable tie to actually make it maintenance free. It's literally just because to be maintenance free, it has to be accessible by means of a tool, which is a cable tie. You need a tool to cut the cable tie, basically. That's all it's, all it's about, really. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of a silly thing, really, if it's up, up in the ceiling, but hey, we do what we do to comply. So, um, yeah. I'll uh, put you back on the time lapse and I'll just swap this over. All right, so the junction box is done. It was exactly as I thought. The, the problem with those um, ideal boxes is they're just not designed for more than about two cables, really. So you end up, like, re there's just no space inside for the, for the, um, the push fit connectors. So you end up kind of ramming everything in. And it just doesn't feel, just doesn't feel good really, unfortunately. Whereas the Wargo boxes, you can fit like eight cables in those. They're just amazing. So uh, anyway, I've tested this. I've just done an earth loop test on those wires just to make sure everything's okay with my junction box and all is good. So I'm gonna put this light fitting up now. I've got a joist that I can fix to, so that's quite good. Slide the fitting over because it's hard to actually push the cable through the grommet once it's fitted into the back, it's pretty tight. So I just kind of do it like that. And then the great thing about these is they've just got push fit connections inside, so they're super easy to fit. Um, I've got, oh, you know, if you're in the market for new safety glasses, don't get these UVX ones. They're absolutely rubbish. They just fall off your face all the time. I don't know if I bought like the extra large ones or something, but they just literally, as soon as you move your face, they just slip off. They don't grip to the sides of your head at all. They look kind of really smart and they're not cheap, but they just fall off all the time. I did get some really good ones before, which I'm gonna get again next time, which are called No Cry off Amazon. They were really good. But these ones, uh, these UVX ones are just 
really annoying because they're always falling off my head, especially I think when it's hot, but it's just so loose, you see. Let me know what um, safety glasses you recommend. Now for the um, fixings for this, there are various, uh, there are four fixing holes. Obviously I've got to try and line up with the joist in the ceiling already, but try to cover the paint mark as much as possible. And probably the only annoying thing about these fittings is the fact that actually the screw holes don't come pre-drilled, so you've got to kind of screw, you've got to kind of screw your screw through the plastic or drill them out beforehand. And that is a bit annoying. So you end up doing like I'm doing. Um, I just end up dropping tons of screws. I'm just gonna keep trying until I manage to screw through it. Saves the day. The, uh, the screwdriver that you use to poke holes in things. Everyone, every electrician's got one. Don't pretend that you don't. Basically, it's like a little terminal screwdriver that's had the insulation snipped off and ends up getting used to mark holes on walls and stuff like that. There we go. Once you get a little hole through, then it's much easier actually. Voila, mon passeport. Okay, so. Okay, that one's good. And then if I line up the other one, that should hit the joist as well. That'll do the trick. And of course it didn't. A little Wago connector to put on the CPC because there's no CPC terminal, but I think it's nice to just put it in a connector rather than just leaving it loose. And then these wires just push in like so. And then that little retaining screw which I had in my mouth earlier that's just to hold this cover up. So you just screw that in. So, and then turn her on. There we go. Nice and bright. So you've got these dip switches on here. If you want to change the light color, you can, but I just usually go with 3000K, I think, for a domestic setting. It's, that's absolutely fine. And then the cover just screws on really nice and, nice and neatly. So super easy to fit. It's off. It's weird how they literally put it on its own circuit, this thing. It, it, there's only one smoke alarm, but they put it on its own circuit, which is a bit weird. It's obviously the interconnect, which is not in use. So at least there's not lots of slack. So make sure the circuit's on. I figured out why Thomas Nagy has got a cameraman now, because Every time I film at the moment, for some reason, my camera keeps cutting off. It's just my phone, you know, I just use my iPhone. But every time I'm filming, my camera cuts off and I don't realize. So I'm in the middle of saying something really profound, like about a smoke alarm. And uh, then the camera cuts off and I've kind of, it's ruined the moment, you know, because I'm just kind of talking as I go on filming and I'm not going to do it all over again and kind of fake it. So anyway, what I was saying is that these smoke alarms are really great, these Ico ones, and they're really easy to fit. But one of the things I was mentioning was that you can get battery only ones with a wireless interlink module. These ones, this is on its own circuit anyway, it's, well it was on its own circuit, but it, it's powered up by itself. It's the only one in the house. But you can get wireless interlinking modules which just click into these, into, into here, they just slide in. 
But what I was saying was you can get actually battery only ones. So they're not mains powered, but they have a 10 year lithium battery in, but they also have a wireless module inside so that they can communicate with other battery alarms in the house so that they all go off at the same time. And that made me kind of think, actually, what's the point of installing mains powered ones? If they've got a 10 year battery anyway, and they've got wireless interlink, why fit mains powered ones? Why fit hard wired ones? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. I'd love to know because I know a lot of you guys, you know, fit these all the time. Let me know if you fitted any of those ICO battery only wireless interlink ones. I'd love to know. So these just click in super easy. They just click in like that and slide across. And that's it done. Um, and they're so easy to remove the head. You just put a screwdriver in the side and then slide it across and take it off. So in 10 years time, when this is due for replacement, the customer can even do it themselves if they're, you know, if they've got their wits about them, slide it off and then slide a new head on and it's good to go. You don't need to change the base and rewire it and all, all that stuff. Actually, I get called out often to change these anyway, and it's just a case of unclick the old head and click the new head in. And it's a really nice, easy job to do. So I'm always happy when somebody asks me to do smoke alarm change and it's ICO ones that are fitted because it's just a really easy job. These have the audio link thing in as well. I don't know if you've tried it, but it's quite interesting. You get this app on your phone and then you press the button on here in a certain sequence and the phone listens to the beeping sequence that it makes and then it tells you the health of the alarm. Um, so it sort of tells you if there are any problems and it gives you all the data about like how long it's been active for and how many, how many times it's gone off and stuff like that. It's, it's quite clever, really. So, um, yeah, gain immediate access to alarm status information via free audio link app. It's a bit of a gimmick probably, but um, it's quite cool anyway. And what you're supposed to do with these is once you've changed one, you sp you're supposed to put in the sticker on the consumer unit with the date that you fitted them and also the little red sticker to identify which circuit they're on. So I'm gonna go and do that now. Do not mega alarms, that's quite funny. John Ward made a video about that and he mega them just to see what would happen. <laughs> it's quite an interesting video. Actually, not a lot happened really, but um, it's quite entertaining to just see that video done. And it sort of made a crackling noise when he got to a thousand volts, which is quite cool. Right, this socket is loose, so I'm just gonna fix this back. Goodness knows what I'll we'll find behind it. Probably the back box is cracked or something, that would be typical. I think if I remember rightly, this one's actually spurred off another socket on the other side of the, the wall, anyway. Um, no. Well, the back box isn't broken at least, actually. It's an MK back box, but they've fitted, they've only fitted one screw in it. So that would be why it's not really fixed back properly. And that screw itself is really, really loose. That's interesting. Kind of looks like blue tack. It's like they've put blue tack in the hole. It's probably because it's like horsehair plaster. <laughs> but they've just basically put blue tack in and then screwed into the blue tack, or well, maybe not blue tack, but it's some kind of blue blue filler anyway. Uh, there is a second screw here, but it's really, really rubbish. Not very helpful. This back box doesn't have many knockouts. It's a brick wall, so it should fix back fairly well. So this one is just the switch is kind of completely broken on it, so it's completely loose. And I don't know if the actual back box, yeah, the back box is broken as well. Now unfortunately, I just realized that I don't actually have any single sockets on the van. So I think what I'm gonna do is just change it for a double. Um, because 
the extra cost of like two quid for a double socket is far less than the cost for me to go all the way to the wholesalers to buy a single socket and then come back. It's gonna take me at least half an hour, if not more, to do that. And that time is far more expensive than the extra couple of quid labor uh, materials to just put a double socket. Plus, this room actually only has two single sockets in it, so if I change this to a double, then I've already added 50% more capacity to the room in terms of what sockets are there. Of course, when I take this off the wall, probably it's gonna like rip all the plaster off or something. Yeah, not too bad. Bit of old wallpaper behind there. They've obviously fitted this. It must be a pretty ancient back box and they've fitted the back box over the old wallpaper and then plastered around it. So this is another classic really, which is the, the old kind of lamp holder. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me show you that. Right, so here is the, can you see the wires are exposed there and then if you look at that it's just completely completely shot basically they've overheated and they've got all brittle and everything and cracked and the whole thing's pulled out and up here it's kind of pulled out as well so i think what i'm going to do in this case is replace the whole uh, pendant and lamp holder i'm not going to replace the ceiling rose but just the pendant and the lamp holder is actually easier to do that sometimes rather than um, trying to replace the lamp holder. And this flex cable is really kind of old and had it anyway. Um, battery's died on my mic. So sorry if it's a bit echoey now. So basically this is a, what we call a pendant set, which is ceiling rose and lamp holder. This is the lamp holder, this is the ceiling rose, and this is a flexible cord that goes in between. We're just literally going to steal this part basically, I'm not going to change the base because the ceiling looks so crumbly that the whole ceiling is just going to fall down if I try and replace that. So we just unscrew the terminals that hold this flex into place, like so. And then this part we need to keep because this will fit on there, the new one will not. But this is absolutely full of dust, so I'm just going to go and shake this out. So that's shaken out, so it's ready to go back on. The length is fine, but what we kind of need to do is um, get this length right so that the Flex will go around that and then into the terminals and, and it will be held by these little cord grip things. It will be held fairly solid so that if someone pulls it, it just stays in. So I think I need to do something like that. So I need to cut a little bit off these. And just a little tip for you here if you're not sure which way the polarity is supposed to be. The line terminal, or live, always goes in the one with two uh, connections and the neutral goes in the one with three. So that's how you can tell which one's which. Ah, oh, stupid. I forgot to put this on, didn't I? Classic, that is an absolute classic mistake. I bet. Let me know in the comments if you've done that before, but I think pretty much every electrician on the planet who's wired a pendant or 
the other one, the other classic is steel or armoured cable where you forget to put the shroud on and you do the gland and then you have to take the gland off. It's so annoying when that happens. There we go. Right, start again. Take two. There we go. So, it's that little tug that doesn't pull out. So that's good. And then basically these have two sides. So the top ring is just to access the the life connections on there and these should be wrapped around so you've got like a cord grip on there again so that stops this kind of strain relief if someone pulls on it it stops it from pulling the cable out of the terminals the wires out of the terminals and this is literally just like a log ring to hold the um, the lampshade on so you just put the lampshade on like that and then you screw this Screw this back on, lock ring back on. I know this is obvious for those of you who are, you know, time served electricians, but there are a lot of learners who watch the channel, and there are also a lot of people from other countries who don't have like pendant lights, for example. So I'm just trying to explain things a little bit more clearly for those kind of people. Now, there was no bulb in here, or no lamp, sorry. Bulbs grow, lamps glow. Somebody said that in the comments the other day. So this is a lamp, not a bulb, okay? All right, calm down, people. Um, the, there was no lamp, so obviously, you know, I've just put a lamp in there, I didn't quote for it, but like uh, a few quid for an LED lamp, it's not gonna, not gonna kill me. And at least the tenant gets some light. So that works. Slightly annoying how the lamp, sh the, the flexes are never quite straight. They sort of take a while to straighten out which always annoys me slightly, but anyway, is what it is. Right, so another thing that we need to sort out is this. I forgot to show you. But basically, um, that cable is just not all the way into the box. There's single insulated wiring exposed there. I mean, it's under the counter and stuff, so it's very un unlikely that anyone's going to actually, you know, touch it or anything, but it needs to be sorted out. So I'm just going to unplug these and um, give it a little, uh, probably have to move that box over slightly to the right and then just re-terminate the cable. Alright, so that's done. That was fairly easy. I managed to just shift it to the right a little bit and then get the cable properly terminated into it. So that's all good. So I've got to push these appliances back now. This is a little pet hate of mine, people who leave the, the little cardboard things on. I've seen these actually shorting out plugs before because they get moisture in and then they short out between the, the pins um, so I always just take them off if I have a chance anyway, washing machine and dishwasher plugged back in interesting really because that's a spur off the ring and you've got potential you know quite a lot of loading going on there 26 amps because you've got a dishwasher and washing machine plugged in there. But technically 2.5 can take it, so it's just about okay. Oh, right, well, it's the very end of a very long and hot day, but I am done here. Remedial work complete, tick. Uh, all I've just got to do is write up the certificate, obviously, and um, yeah, then we're done. I've labeled everything up in here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but I've, I've done a little trick. I can't remember who showed it to me, um, but somebody on Instagram or something. Basically, I've put the ZE on the board, and I've also done the spacing here, the, the gaps between every two RCBOs, just to leave a little bit of a heat gap, because there's plenty of space, and it was easy enough to do it on this one. Um, so what I've done is I've put a little label to say, do not fit new circuits and gaps as well, just so that people know to not fill the gaps in. Um, yeah, all done and dusted, I'm out of here, as always, thanks for watching, um, if you like my videos, hit a thumbs up, if you don't, hit a thumbs down, uh, and if you really like them, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll get notified, I'm posting three videos a week at the moment, it's just insane, I'm struggling to keep up with it, but I've jumped on the YouTube train and I cannot seem to get off and uh, actually YouTube um, put me on their homepage as a creator 
um, creator on on the rise or something. I was on YouTube trending today for 24 hours, which is nice. So I think I've gained like 200 subscribers in a few hours just from that. So if you're a new subscriber who found me on YouTube trending on the Explore page, welcome. Glad to have you on board. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.